to me, devotion is like it. There's discipline, commitment, and devotion. And the more commitment you have, the less you have to exercise discipline. But when you have devotion, devotion is like a, an unstoppable commitment. It's something that you're willing to die for. And I think that that, to me, when I'm in devotion, then it becomes timeless. This is The Deep Dive with Adam Roa. What is up, Deep Divers? Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. I am Adam Roa, and I'm here today with Oren Harris, someone who has been on the Deep Dive before. If you haven't heard it, this will not be a follow-up. So you don't, <laughs> this is not a part two, um, so don't worry. Uh, this is an impromptu, actually, uh, podcast where we got an opportunity to just... I'm staying in your house. Yes. I, I like to say that... Y- your guest room is actually my room. Yes. Uh, yes. You created that from day one. <laughs> it's a joy having you here. Uh, thanks, Ben. And um, yeah, so on uh, what I, I want people to know before we get going on this is to let them know that um, the... Oops, there we go. Yeah, is to let them know that you're one of the few people that I come across who understands energy Mm. in the way that I feel like I understand energy. Uh (laughs) It's just like the wizardry mechanics of, Mm. of energetics, um, you know, in the create community, which is where I've been doing a lot of these podcasts actually live. Um, I teach a class called energetic wizardry because oh, nice. I, I believe that everything is, can ultimately be seen through kind of how we see it on the surface level, but also through the lens of energy. There's an energetic component and you see things that deeply. Um, so I'm so excited to bring your wisdom once again, back to the deep dive podcast. Thanks for doing it. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I love the spontaneity and, um, yeah, excited to dive in and see what comes through. <laughs> well, um, I like to start everything now with these kind of uh, deep dive questions. Mm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start off actually with a few <laughs> questions, and you don't have to feel like you have to answer them super quickly, mm. but um, they're just primer questions. Are you down Got for it. that? Yeah, I'm down. Okay. Um, what do you think is the most powerful? energetic force in the universe and why love and why because mm, love is the only thing that can love is everything and it's only when we're love that we're truly any expression of our real divinity um when we are love we are limitless simply because love sees everything on an equal plane. Love can envelop and include everything. And so that is a powerful force because as we know, or as you and I know, and many people know that what it is that we resist, we give our power away to, and love's like the opposite of resistance. It like absorbs, it includes everything. So it doesn't waste any of its power in resistance. So it has all of that energy at its disposal. I'm speaking about love like it's a person, but love, love's the most powerful force in all of existence. And I feel like true transformation even, and when I say true, I mean like in a more sustainable sense of transforming, like on an alchemical level, transforming or healing ourselves in any way i feel like somewhere in the mix somehow love gets involved and that is one of the key components that makes a true transformation even possible Hmm. well that's great i'm I'm glad i had a feeling that you were going to say love it was kind of a setup um (laughs) because got him (laughs) because um I agree with you first and foremost. And also because the way that I'm structuring these podcasts these days is um, theming them around the music that's been coming out. Cause I, I want people to start, I, we've talked about this. I want people to start recognizing that you can um, input so much consciousness mm-hmm. in, and wisdom and depth into uh, art, into a single, totally. into a single line. Mm-hmm. And, 
Um, this coming week, uh, at the time we're recording this, basically a, a week from now, mm -hmm. I'm releasing my next song, which is Chase Me. So for people mm -hmm. who are listening to this podcast right now, it, the song um, may be out, it may not be out. And um, it's my first... The, my past few songs were, were kind of like heartbreak songs. And mm -hmm. uh, this one's the first song I ever wrote, which is truly a love song and oh, like nice. a cosmic love song. Nice. Um, and the, <laughs> so when you say love is the most powerful, <clears throat> excuse me, force in the universe and you're in a deep relationship, like a soulmate twin flame <laughs> yeah. depth of relationship what do you think of what do you think actual soulmates and twin flames what does that actually mean in terms of like an energetic <laughs> <laughs> um i mean i don't personally have a deep relationship to either one of those words i mean the essence of it uh for me it comes to, it comes back to love Right. And the foundation for a really thriving relationship or a divine union relationship is, is, is love. Right. And um, I wrote something on my Instagram recently. It was like, don't try to contain love, let love contain you. And I was saying that our container, meaning our relationship container, we allowed it to be created and continue to be refined. The actual container, uh, we allowed it to be created by love and in and in love rather than the other way around. And so love is the foundation that allows us to truly be in unconditional love as the foundation, but within a construct of a relationship and whatever we're defining that to be. Great. I feel like you didn't address the question though. I got to call you out on it. So like, yeah. in, oh my, oh my. <laughs> so, when, when you, so like, what do you think people are referring to when they think of, of soulmates? And the reason I'm bringing this up is because the, the song chase me that's uh -huh. coming out, um, literally says, uh, chase me around the rest of the galaxy. Mm. Um, and, uh, talks about all the lives we've lived this, this past life. It's like our love transcends this one single human lifetime. Mm. And I'm curious for you, from your perspective, um, when it comes to relationships, when mm -hmm. it comes to what people normally refer to as a soulmate or a twin flame, mm -hmm. um, I know that you don't necessarily subscribe so much to that, but like, what do you think is the energy that people are talking about there how do you think of so a soulmate of like a, a true like i guess evolutionary companion you know um someone who well twin flames were kind of like the same soul right and I think that a, a soulmate is someone that is aligned on a divine level as a partner with you. So there's, there is an evolution built into that. There is a, um, a deep sense of partnership in love, but also in evolution. I keep bringing back the word evolution because I do think that a soulmate relationship is reflective of our relationship back to remembering our connection with source that's how I see a soulmate relationship. It's kind of like the ideal partner, like a soulmate's the ideal kind of partner to come back into union with source within ourselves, but in the relationship and come to a place of union. If you want to look at the practical picture of, of it, I would say it's divine union and that being expressed in physical form. That's what I would call a soulmate relationship. So it has everything built into it that is designed to help each individual come deeper into themselves. So I could already feel the energy in me and, um, this podcast is going to be me like asking you really difficult questions and nah, like, challenging, like challenging. <laughs> Bring so it. like, so in terms of, um, that I would, I would say that we probably both believe that you can't ha not have 
divine union. Like every union is going to be divine. You can't not have a relationship that evolves your soul. That is like evolution in motion through, through relationship. Mm -hmm. And so why do you think people, if every relationship is going to evolve your soul, you can't right. get into the wrong one. If you wind up in one and it winds up being a bruise, abusive or whatever, it's still necessary for right. what your soul has called. It. Right. So in that sense, we're all soulmates. Well, that's what I'm saying. So why do you think, what do you think is this differentiator that people put on relationships where some of it is said, well, this is my soulmate versus like, oh, this is just a chick I'm dating. Right. Well, e even when you said what people put on it, that that's already interesting right there, because I do think that people put things on soulmate relationship the same way they put things on love. Right. And so we're kind of defining what soulmate means to us on an individual level. What, what are the, what are the nuances, you know, somebody that you're like, what are the differentiators? Somebody that you're, I think on a practical level of alignment, it's like somebody who you are choosing to build something with, to build a life with somebody that you're choosing to, um, that you feel in alignment with and are choosing to build with. And, uh, I mean, that's one quality. If I jump to back to like to the soul level, then I just think of like, who are the best like soul partners? But that, that's a great question. That's a really good question. Like, this is a deep dive, bro. What other kind of deep questions dive. What are, else are we going to do? And this is what we're starting with is these questions now. Yeah. What, what do you think? What's a differentiator? You know, I think, I think that, I think, um, people use the term soulmate to describe, um, a depth of feeling because I believe that um, in a lot of ways, love has become cliche. Right. I believe that people have started to um, say, I love you when what they're feeling is that like lust filled honeymoon initial right. something. And if in the first couple months, it's funny because I, I said, I love you to my current girlfriend mm -hmm. fast. Uh, fast uh, wait well i mean relatively yeah. fast um and i would like to think that i know what that feeling is now having had a depth of it mm. after you know, a 10 year relationship and then a, a whirlwind romance and, and just these things where i know when it's it's not that mm. I'm on dates with people and be like oh like i'm not in love with this person right but, but simultaneously where can you progress to if love is there in the first two months, you know I mean? I feel like, especially in the conscious community, if you're into personal development work, which is pretty much everyone who's listening to this podcast, right? right? <laughs> um, you get to know yourself at a deeper level, right? That's what happens. And when you know yourself at a deeper level, you can bring more of yourself to the world and to relationships. And so when you get into a relationship with someone compared to before you started doing the work, you are now, um, bringing more of yourself, more of yourself is being seen. So there's a depth of connection that you mm -hmm. feel. And so it's, it is possible for you to feel a, the same depth of love that you felt previously much, much faster mm -hmm. because you're bringing more of yourself to it. Right. And I think that for a lot of people to, if love is there, then after six, seven, eight months, as that deepens, we've had to find a word that, that makes <laughs> us feel like we can describe that. And I think people will say soulmate, soulmate. or twin flame or whatever mm -hmm. as a way of describing a depth to the love that they yeah, feel. Yeah. So that's one differentiator or nuance. It's, it's like, it's depth, you know, it's, that's something that's yeah. Depth, you know, and, the, and it's like, what's the unique quality there. There's like a quality. I do feel that, but we're just like, well, what are, what are those qualities? One of them's depth, depth of connection. Right. And what would be another quality then to qualify someone as a soulmate right. outside of depth? What would you say would be another quality? Man, that's such a great question. Cause it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a feeling. And I'm trying to stay away from like the, or go deeper than even what I said, like somebody I want to build a life with. That's a, that's a, strong differentiator but do, you, do they if do you have to want to build a life with someone for them to be a soulmate no 
<laughs> so, so for me, it's like, you know, as a wordsmith, I know you're a wordsmith, you're a great poet um, as well and, and love your writing. And um, I just know that to me, words, all words are, are like rappers to consciousness. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they try and wrap up a feeling or an idea or right. something and and we put them into a container that is this word and so like love the idea that that those four letters can encapsulate any portion of what love actually <laughs> is or feels like is kind of silly but i do think that i love you or oh, i love this taco or i mm-hmm. love i love this this rug or this pillow i just like i love this whatever I think love has, it's funny. I think, I feel like in many ways, the word love has lost some of its, it's, yeah. it's, it's, um, gravitas because it's, it's used so, so much. much. I totally agree. And so now we've had to develop things like soulmate and twin flame, flame. as ways of describing within at least the conscious community, right? Um, the spiritual community. Um, I don't know if I like even conscious community anymore as a term, but like within the kind of new age spiritual community as a way of saying, I really, really, love yeah, exactly, exa- <laughs> exactly. It's like, I re- no, really, really mm-hmm. love you. Yeah. No, and I, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, we're in agreement. So let's go on to just the next kind of just like deep dive question here that comes up, which is if um, every single relationship is a divine union, that means that it's a soulmate Mm -hmm. (laughs) on some level, (laughs) the depth of which we'll figure out the wording needed to describe it. Um, How do you know as someone, how long have you been in your relationship? Um, almost three years. Yeah. Almost three years. And, and Oren is dating, uh, Zahara, who is one of our, one of my best friends and, and a facilitator within the create community and Epic human almost three years. Now you've been dating. How do you know when a relationship is one that it's like, Oh, this is the one that I'm going to stay in for three years, as opposed to, well, this divine union over here mm. is beautiful, but I can tell it's not a soulmate. Yeah, it's more, it's more seasonal. Yeah, it's seasonal <laughs> as opposed to annual. Right. Yeah, I mean, one, there's a depth of feeling of, of home. And there's, there's just this sense of like, over time as things in most relationships, there's more and more depth, there's more and more intimacy, there's more and more parts of each other that are being seen and, um, and, and loved, uh, ideally, then there's a kind of sinking feeling in that where it's like, oh, okay, all of me is loved, all of me is welcome here. I, I feel like that happens for many of us over time. But for me personally, it's like, there's the sense of that same feeling without, like, without being too far into the relationship, just a sense, a sense of home, a sense of belonging and a sense of like, okay, this person is, is here with all of me and I'm here with all of her. And do you think that, you know, we, we were, uh, we got breakfast this morning and we were talking about relationships and, (laughs) and, um, it's funny because I consider myself, I don't know if I can, I guess I could consider myself this way. Um, I was like, is this something that I can even, is it appropriate for me to be considering myself this thing? Or is this really for other people to, to be in consideration of, but, um, what I meant is that I feel like I um, bring all of myself Mm -hmm. to most of what I do, Mm -hmm. right? Like I don't, like if you catch me in certain moments, you'll, I'll, I'll be like, I'm not feeling very social today or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, But like in general, if you have a conversation with me, 
I'll tell you my deepest anything, whether I've known you for five years or I've, I've just met you. Mm -hmm. Um, Like the number of people who like write me on Instagram and say they felt this or whatever. And I end up sharing something super personal and just like, I I put myself out there in that way. Um, Which I think lends itself to falling in love very easily. I I think that there is a part of me that I put myself out there and so much of myself Uh that when I find someone who accepts and loves that much of me, it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply in love. Right. And I appreciate that because I would rather love so deeply and have it burn into a beautiful, uh, you know, firework explosion after six months or a year than to slow burn it over five or six years as I just reveal little bits more. And so my question for you is based on our conversation we were having earlier, where we both also (laughs) have been the ones to make sure a relationship doesn't go too fast. And it's like, well, let me like pace this. Yeah. Have you found in your three years with Z, have you found like there's more of yourself that you allow to be seen that you didn't allow before? Or do you feel like it's all of you and, and you're only discovering new parts and those are the parts that weren't seen because you didn't even know they were there or like, it's more for me, it's more that than the latter, you know? And, and, and I, cause I'm similar to you. I I'm pretty all in, I'm not, you know, creating time through mental filters of like, oh, now it's safe to be me. You know, I tend to just be like, hey, let's be efficient here. (laughs) Let me present all of me to the best of my ability and start the relationship there. So I do feel like it's been more of layers that are peeling back, even in my own evolution um, or things that are unconscious that are becoming conscious, you know, in the relationship. So in that sense, there's a deepening and a being seen and there's that process. And so that, um, yeah, my whole going slower, taking time, I think is more a sensitivity because I was so used to going fast. And so fast also in the sense of like, wow, I'm available for love and like deep connection. So I'm feeling it. It's like, you know, the checkpoints, like deep connection, you know, this person's attractive, all the taking all the boxes, I just chose to slow down and allow myself also to discover, I guess, qualities of relationship that I hadn't even identified. Like what? And what are those qualities? Like, like for example, um, (laughs) this is, this was actually before our, right before we met, I, I had met this girl maybe six months before I met Z or maybe a year before I met Z. And it's a funny story. I was out having dinner on my birthday and I met this gal and she was actually with her partner or her ex partner at dinner. And we had this amazing connection, this kind of deep soulmate type of feeling of connection. And she reaches <laughs> out, she reaches out to me and she messaged me. And then I was like, Oh, was that your guy? She's like, Oh, we were just trying to give it one more chance, but no, we're not together anymore. And she wanted to get together with me. And then I had this epiphany, which was really funny. Like literally made me laugh at myself. And I was like, wait a minute. She was fascinated by me, but am I fascinated by her? I couldn't tell because I was being fascination. So I was just seeing a reflection of me, right? And then that had me go, is that even important to me? And then I was like, well, what would it be like for me to experience feeling that way about someone fascinated in that way and and like captivated in that way? And so that humbled me and inspired me. The reason it humbled me is because I hadn't thought of that. So then it's not like I scrapped all of my relationship ideas. I just opened myself to characteristics and qualities that I hadn't identified that I even wanted to be receptive to that, like being, you know, I'm very unconditionally loving. I feel like I can hold infinite space. I'm used to being that way and it doesn't require something from someone else. So it hadn't occurred to me that I really wanted that in a relationship until really I was in relationship. So I mean, there's two, I mean, there's one, I think you just spoke to what I believe to be the quintessential, um, 
necessity of relationships and the value in relationships is like through them, you get to discover new aspects of your own self, but also human relating the humans that develop and shift what you desire of yourself and other humans. Like right. you're constantly in this evolution of like, whoa, like when I think of my last two relationships, I know what I liked. I know what I didn't like. Right. And, and it keeps refining. It's like, Ooh, this and this and this and this. And I add to my list of what I like and what I don't like with an openness to obviously it being different. And, and knowing like what are the necessities right. of a, a relationship. Yeah. One thing I is sparking is that, you know, going back to like, how do you know you're in love? And if it's your soulmate for me, from the very beginning of my relationship with Z, I also had a very kind of abstract, but deep sense of what we, what we could be of a new possibility. And I, I was feeling almost like the alchemy of our souls in its fullest expression, you know, the full compliment, uh, uh, power of our union together, but more as a potential, but that struck me in a very tangible way, even though it was abstract. Cause I was just kind of, we were in the evolution and getting to know one another, but that's been a kind of North star in a sense. And that feels like longevity going back to like, you know, thinking, Oh, well, if somebody I want to build with or somebody that's, that's a long term, I had that sense. And as we've been evolving and growing and deepening, it continues to manifest. So it's, it's like, it's surprising sometimes, but it's never really surprising. Cause I'm like, Oh yeah, we're right on track. There's just a feeling of like, yeah, we're right on track. Now we're, you know, now we're at the next chapter it just keeps space. So it feels like we're living into something that has been established in a sense, even if it's just a potential and we're kind of filling in, you know, we have free will on some level, but that's the sense I had with her from the beginning. And that's a, a differentiator for me. Yeah. And it's proven itself to be that way. Every single page chapter season of our relationship, it just feels like we're like, you know, refining this like diamond essence. Well, it's so interesting because when you were talking about the other woman that was on the date with her ex or whatever, and you were, you said that you felt this soulmate esque quality, Right. Which is interesting because that means that there's a quality that you feel in soulmate essence. Yeah. Initially. Like it, it's the recognition feeling is one Got it. was one quality of that. A familiarity um, feeling. A familiarity feeling. Mm. Right. And that's that's where I think we're trying to pin these distinctions between that's something that's more widespread, perhaps. You That's know, what this like, entire podcast becomes. It's just like defining what a soulmate is and how to identify <laughs> right. it. You should sell sell it as a course. <laughs> That's what this podcast becomes. So um, when it comes to uh, that refinement, right? Mm -hmm. That refinement process. Um, I love how you said, am I fascinated by her? Yeah. And, and like, am I fascinated by her? Am I, do I have that level of who is this person? What, when, what is that? And um, how often we actually feel that that's like one of the biggest things um, for me is I meet so many people and, and not going to lie, many of them, beautiful women. Right. Like, uh, I was just in Tulum, Mexico, and mm -hmm. I had this experience where this woman came up to me and was just like, I am her first thing she said to me, she walked up to me and she said, Adam. And I said, yes. She goes, I am obsessed with you. Right. And <laughs> same, same, same energy. Right. Yeah. She's like, I'm obsessed uh, with you. And I said, that's a beautiful thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> and she, and she proceeded to tell me like how long she's been following me and the art she's in love and whatever. And this is a beautiful woman, like a beautiful, beautiful woman. And, and I, the, what's different is like when I met Lindsay, my uh -huh. current girlfriend, um, I, it was a, I could talk to this woman mm -hmm for the next, what feels like forever. Like I could, I could just literally spend the next three days, right. what feels like just sitting here and just 
talking to her. Um, and, and it's not, I don't do it. When I say fascination, I don't go in the sense of like, tell me where you grew up. Tell me where right, you right. it's actually just like talking about things that have nothing to do with necessarily even our path, our past sometimes, right. but just like, I'm, f I'm intrigued enough by almost like just the frequency of at which they communicate that I just want to keep communicating. Right. Yeah. That's a, I think that's another one of those, another thing on our list, whatever that is there, there is, I resonate with that. Yeah. And because it's, it's to, to complete this thought, like the woman that I was speaking to was beautiful. She, she was incredibly friendly, kind hearted, conscious and, and um, successful in, in her own right and, and whatever she does. And, and yet um, I didn't think I would like to spend the next three days talking to this person. Right. I, I thought to myself, what a lovely conversation this is. I'm getting kind of tired. I wonder how long until I go home and get to sleep. <laughs> and that's more my, my, my general feeling is it's like I'm enjoying the conversation and I, there's a part of me that knows this conversation is going to end some point and I can continue on my way. Yeah. But then there's those people that you meet where you go, this has completely stopped my movement down a path in this moment. This right. is like a, a pause. Yeah. There's a, there's a sense of that. And obviously if we have that experience with someone, then we can refer to that, but there's just a kind of sense, even with you and I, we didn't spend much talking time together. And then we went into your deep dive podcast and here we are again, but I just have that sense with you that we could talk forever. What is up, Deep Divers? Pardon the interruption. I just wanted to take a moment to let you know about the Create community. It is the collective renaissance of education, art, transformation, and entertainment. And we are having live online events every single week. And this is where I actually teach my energetic wizardry class every week alongside some of the most epic personal development facilitators that I personally know. And if you have been looking for the place where you can go like a modern mystery school, like where you can go and learn about things like business and astrology and gene keys and the energetics of how to create your reality, this is the place for you. This is a growing community. We would love to have you visit thecreatecommunity.com to join. We could talk forever. Right. And, but you also have a sense, like I remember, I, I mean, it was months ago, like several trips back. Every time, like I said, every time I come into LA, I see if if, this, if my room is open um, to stay. But several trips back, you were like, Adam, we're going to be creating soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm just planting the seed. I don't know what it is or when it is. I don't have any ideas or anything, but I'm just planting the seed. I have a feeling we're going to create something together soon. Yes. And um, that... That's, that's the sense. same. It's the same sense. It's the same sense. And that's what I'm describing in my soulmate relationship with my partner, starting to describe what is that sense that's not, it's not based upon experience, even. Because when I said that to you, I think that was the first conversation we really even had, but there was just a sense. It was more abstract, but it felt, it felt tangible to me. So we have depth. Uh, as being a characteristic of, yeah. of a soul mate. We have um, the, uh, the frequency of like it, way in which they communicate, like whatever it is that they're right. putting out that has that. Uh, we have familiarity. Familiarity. I want to add one thing to depth because it's almost like, and I, I did think about this consciously at some point before I met Z and then a little bit after I met Z. I think part of my slowing down was it's almost a grounded for me to experience a grounded version of love. And that's what's could be missing in fascination. If somebody's mm. just like truly captivated in such a way that their hearts open, their spirits lit. So they, they may literally be experiencing love, but there's something in me, I guess, because I feel so abundant in that it doesn't, that in and of itself doesn't captivate me. So one of the things that captivated me about Z is I felt her receiving me in that similar way, you know, but it didn't feel like fascination. It felt, it felt grounded, which lets me know something about her, about her. And that was important to me is that 
it, it's it's all. Do, do you get what I'm saying? There was a well, groundedness. What's the distinction? Was, what would you, what would be a word as a wordsmith here? What would be the distinction of like grounded fascination? What would be a word? Yeah, it's it's like I'll give a contrasting example. You know, I would come across women sometimes in my past, especially when I was really like awakening and like my spirit was just radiating so strong. Is I could tell that their experience with me and how I was being with them, they were like, I'm in love. And at some point I was like, you're not in love. I didn't have the words for it. And then I eventually developed some words. I remember speaking with this one gal. It's like, I understand why you're translating this feeling to mean you're in love. She's like, this is what my grandma's talking about. She's like, this is, I'm in love. And whatever that distinction is between feeling love and being in love is what I'm talking more grounded and more mature or more abundant. You know, so I'm used to feeling that within myself and within another. So that in and of itself is not, is I might, I don't translate that. Oh my God, the feeling that must mean it's, we're in love. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You and know, I, yeah. What, what pops into my head right now, uh, cause I often get these like images, right. And metaphors and things is like, if you get thrown into the deep end of a pool, Mm -hmm. <laughs> you okay let's just say you get thrown into a pool um you're not swimming <laughs> you're 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 feeling the water right you're feeling you're you're in the water but but you're not swimming right once you come up for air and like pause yourself and and like you said ground yourself like right. when you like oh now you can swim, swim. in, okay. in, in this pool. And I think a lot of people get thrown into the deep end of that feeling and they go, I'm in love. And it was like, no, you're drowning right. in <laughs> this feeling <laughs> right. Right, of this deep end here. You're drowning right now. Mm -hmm. And as you ground into that and actually say, okay, I'm in this thing now, mm -hmm. but you learn how to navigate that. You learn how to play in that. You know how to celebrate that. You, right. you don't panic <laughs> in, the, in the same way. Now you are being in love. Right. Nice. That's what popped into my head. Nice. I love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's another soulmate on the soulmate list of characteristics for me, at least that I recognize, I could feel that there was a quality to the adoration and the love feeling that felt very grounded. So ground, a, a feeling of like grounded in, I want to like describe this because this is going to be like the takeaway at the end of this episode. I love mm. it. We're just like, it's, it's grounded in, it's, I believe we just call it, I guess grounded. I mean, grounded in the... I almost want to say by, by saying grounded part of, mm -hmm. part of me feels like it's incorporated mm -hmm. into like, it's integrated into your life mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't like, I think about people who meet someone like at a festival, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have like a burning man romance or something right. <laughs> when you're in love. Sure. You're in love uh -huh. for, five days with someone who has just completely turned your world beautifully inside out. But like, it's not grounded into like, yeah. Life let me, let, in a yeah. Way. I, I, let me, let me, let me give it a go here. Cause when I feel it in me, it feels like abundant, meaning I'm, I'm used to love because I know myself as that. So it's, I'm, I can distinguish that. And then the second thing is like, there's just an awareness. So when I say I love you to her from this grounded, abundant place, which means I'm not, I'm not grasping, right? Then I'm not in the fantasy version of that. The fantasy version of that is like, I'm feeling love. So all I see is everything, all of mm -hmm. your positive qualities. It's like when I say I love you and even from the beginning to her, I actually could see all of her versus only I'm saying that out of the Ooh. feeling of seeing all mm. the positive qualities, all of her light because her heart's open and she's tuned in and, and lit at the moment. I'm actually able to see a depth. And if I see the depth, 
and I'm saying I love you, then that's a more grounded statement. So it's not, it's not like, that's why then when we, you know, the evolutionary path is activated and like things come up in the relationship, it's not like, I'm like, whoa, what happened? I'm like, oh, I, 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 I saw that. I may not have saw it exactly, but it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I, so there's so, a, there's a more stable, there's more stability to me saying, I love you. So the quality is it's actually grounded into reality. Right. Like it's it, the reality, like this reality, because there is the reality of that love space mm -hmm. that like that, that like, I'm going to like throw everything away and just like, go with you wherever and pretend that you are the answer to my everything. And then there's the, Oh, I'm in love with you, including the human. Exactly. Including the parts of you that are wounded or ha haven't fully, um, aren't living in their fullest, highest vibration or integrity, or like, I love those parts of you too, because I see them and right. it doesn't, it doesn't make me love you less. In fact, it, I have an appreciation for those aspects as well. In, in a lot of ways, like when I see, when I think about um, my current relationship and and the love that's there, I see the things that she's wanting to become more of. Mm -hmm. I see the things that she's working on. I right. see where she's headed and I see the, what's currently lacking or hasn't dropped in yet right. on that path. And when I view that, I don't actually go, wow, I'm going to love you so much more when you get there. Like, right. I actually exactly. say, I actually Bingo. go, I, it makes me love you more to see what isn't there that I see you adding right now. Like I see all of it and it's beautiful. Right. And I think when you're grounded in that love, then it just, it's the feeling for me of like, it just keeps getting better. If you're starting from a place of true acceptance and love, you know, more holistically than and, and I guess in our relationship, what makes it uh, also work is that what I see, the potentials I see unfolding in her and vice versa, because we're both devoted to our own evolution anyway, like genuinely, then it's not like either one of us is trying to change the other. It's not, it's not so there's no condition on it. And so it, it's not like, oh, well, I'll love you more or I'm waiting for you to arrive at this place so I can love you more it's a genuine alignment inside of us individually to our own evolution. So whatever she sees in me and I see in her, it's not that it's not like we're dating each other's potential or kind of waiting. And so it feels like it just keeps getting sweeter. And it's such a, it's so sweet to nurture each other on that journey. Mm, I think what you said that everyone should write down is um, not dating each other's potential. Yeah. That. You know what I mean? Like that's so, so important because um, the number of people who get into relationships because of they see, they see who that person can become. Yeah. It's like, listen, no, you get into the relationship with who the person is, is. whether you like it or not, yeah. that's who you are in relationship with. If they, if you don't love that person for who they are now, um, you're in for a ride. <laughs> you're in for a ride because that person may never become that thing. Right. And honestly, probably won't because it's a projection of what you want them to become as opposed to the very intricate journey of their own evolution. Like right. if you would have looked at me at 20, when Azri and I first met, the woman I dated for 10 years, mm -hmm. we met when I was 24. And to, think of who I am now had she, had she at 24 seen my potential. I, I mean, we met in acting class. I was going to be an actor. I was really good at actor and all these things. If she'd seen like, Oh, he's going to be this great actor. And I see the potential for him to do this thing. And she had only dated me, wanting me to become that thing. Who I am now would probably be a major Razor. disappointment yeah. to, to <laughs> someone who's holding me in that. Right. Right. Totally. Um, so, he, so where do you think, the physical comes into play in the role of a soulmate, because I think that you can have soulmates that are of either sex, right? Like a man can have male soulmates. Mm -hmm. You're just like soulmate. Right. Um, but there is a distinction when 
is is the physical is the physical attraction mm -hmm. and that chemistry physically is that the only piece that separates romantic soulmates from soulmates, soulmates who may not be romantic because I, I imagine you have soulmates that are just friends yeah like, for sure is a soulmate yeah I mean, if we're keeping it real like that at the end of the day, like that, if we're, if we're all just being honest, like that's the main differentiator is like, <laughs> we, we sleep together. I mean, if we're just being honest, right? Like yeah, that totally. is the main, it's the main distinction for most people consciously or unconsciously of where it's like, oh, okay, well, this is what makes this really makes it. This is like the physical attraction and that we're, you know, we're, we're, having sex we're sleeping together we're love but, partners you know we're what about all the people who, intimate what about all the people who um marry their soulmates but never have that component really like it's not really a part of that dynamic it's like i know people very much like that who feel like they've married their best friend but mm. they don't have that that component that you ever asked them about it like if they're missing it or wanted it or um no i mean it was it was they're generally generally older people you know what i mean people in their their 50s or something like that and i i don't think i've ever had that conversation mm -hmm. like i'd be interested to ask would I be interested? I was just thinking, would I ask my mom and dad mm -hmm. and just be like, Hey, I would like to know about your sex life. Like mm -hmm. now, where's it at? Do you, are you having sex? Are you having sex right. regularly? <laughs> are you, has it been a long time? I mean, I know my, my, uh, a buddy of mine was telling me that his mother, no, his father told him this, like, um, so imagine in, he, he, he tells his kids, um, your mother and I, your mother gave me basically told me straight up. She no longer wanted to be intimate no longer. And this mm. was like 13 years later that he's telling. And he said he had a choice, which was say, okay, I guess that's no longer a thing or lose his family, like lose his mm. divorce, wow. that's divorce wild. and not have his kids really anymore and so being faced with can i sacrifice physical intimacy to keep my family together like which which is it and i think there are a lot of people i think there's probably people listening to this podcast right now who are in relationships where they haven't been physically intimate with their partners for months or maybe years mm. yeah i i don't that's wild. I mean, I guess it's, I'm only saying this wild because I, I, I understand it conceptually and it's like, okay, the value in the family or keeping the family together, that's the kind of trade-off. Uh, but I don't, I don't believe in sacrifice in a way that's born out of lack. I think that in lack by lack, I just mean lack of perspective, right? Lack of knowing what's possible. And so I don't, that it's just, that's just, that's interesting. Why would one have to sacrifice if we are creators um, to sacrifice something like that or, or to trade something off like that? Well, a limiting belief. A limiting belief, right? A belief, a belief that they have to make exactly, that sacrifice. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like even the idea of sacrifice implies, uh, in my mind, the idea of sacrifice um, has a connotation of it where... Um, it's like, there is no, and it's only, or right. Right. It's, I either get to do this, this or, or I get to do this. That. Um, and I suppose that is a reality. I mean, if you think about it, like by choosing to do this podcast, mm -hmm. we are spending an hour doing this, which means that we sacrificed everything else mm -hmm. except for this. Yeah. I, I think though that the way in which most people probably use the word sacrifice has a sense of lack in it. You know, it has a negative tone to it. it it's almost like you're depriving yourself of something. So like right now we're choosing to this, to do this. So you could say we're sacrificing, but we're not feeling the energy of sacrifice in the way that most people, I hear most people use the word sacrifice, which is victimhood, which is victimhood, which is it from a, a state of, 
power, it's lesser on the scale of power in terms of how, the quality of how they feel, how abundant, how awesome they feel. So it's like, okay, I'm making this sacrifice, you know? So there's this other thing I really want to do and I'm not doing it. We didn't, neither one of us feels that right now. So we're not experiencing sacrifice. You don't even know though that. we're sacrificing just, just like it's the same thing. With, that. What's that? I might have, I, you said, you don't know that. I might have really wanted to be taking a bath right now. Well, then we, we would have been doing the podcast in the bath because we're both oh, creative. Dang it. <laughs> dang it. <laughs> Boom. There you go. And there it is. That's why you're a Jedi. Right <laughs> exactly. There. I'm like, we'll figure it out, <laughs> you know? And, and that's, that's, that's another beautiful relationship point too is harmony. I think that especially within a divine union, for there to be continued harmony, which also is almost synonymous with abundance, meaning we both win, it's the kind of we can have it all. There has to be some sort of, if there was a sacrifice, it would be the sacrifice of the ego or a sacrifice of our perspective to gain a higher perspective. Otherwise, if we're looking at it as this or that, me or you, if we look at it through the identity or the, then we're already it's already, we're already going to be challenged at certain points and trying to create harmony. But if we look at it through, okay, we don't need to know how this is going to happen. We just know that it can happen and we are devoted to the harmony in the relationship, then the higher intelligence and all the pathways of potential or even ideas like, Hey, do the podcast in the bathtub. They're able to come into your consciousness when you expand into that we consciousness. And that's where the harmony exists or how harmony can manifest itself in a way that people don't feel like they're having to sacrifice. And I think it's such an important part of what humans get to understand on a collective level, because what humans right now feel is possible is so limited. Yeah. In my experience, what human beings collectively are seeing is possible. And that's evidenced by the, in my experience, like the bipartisan system in politics. It's like, totally. Oh, the only thing that's possible is one of two choices. Is it? If everyone on this planet actually could, if everyone in the country agreed, oh, look at all these other parties that are also technically running that people don't even pay attention to, but we all believe they were just as possible to vote for, or just as possible to win. We've immediately shifted out of the reality in which we have these two candidates that half the country doesn't <laughs> like one or the other, or, and, and I feel like, um, What's crazy about that is we literally have a system. Everyone says the system's broken, but the system actually has more candidates. Right. There are more people. <laughs> like it's literally the system itself has the opportunity to be more than what we are using it as. And the reason why it is being used the way it is, is because people are looking at this cell phone here mm -hmm. and saying, oh, this is a paperweight. <laughs> right. And and so they never understand how much is actually available, even within the system, without an entire system redesign, just even within the current system. Right. And so what 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 is that? Because that's the same thing we I was talking about in relationship. And so is that a function of a person's level of awareness, consciousness, mindset? Like what's what is it at a fundamental level that whether it's happening in a relationship or on a global scale of looking at, you know, not seeing things in that way. What is it that allows somebody to be and see in that way such that there is more unity, there is more win-win on a practical level in relationships and business and life in general? I mean, I would think that the, the, there's layers and this is not the root, what I'm about to say, but one layer deeper of that is you have to believe it's possible. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I sit here and go, I don't believe that this like two party thing is the only possibility. I believe there's far more possibility. And the moment that I believe something more is possible, I immediately see, Oh, there's other people running. <laughs> right. But I think, I think that you and I, operate that way, not just in relation to relationships or politics or this or that or the other. It's just a fundamental way of seeing. Right. And so what, Without, that's why I'm saying it's not evidence is not needed for that attitude. It's the attitude itself that produces the possibility and then the evidence. So it doesn't, there doesn't even need to be a reference point to believe something's possible. Well, I, 
I think that for me, I can relate it back to I was consistently looked over in mm. life. I was, and primarily because of how small I was physically. That was mm. like the primary thing. Is that why you didn't play I, basketball? Okay. <laughs> I, I did play basketball. I, oh, played bas- oh. I played basketball at a young age. I was a really good point guard because um, I, I saw the flow. Uh, totally. I could see people that. People moving. And so I just could like bounce passes through traffic. Like Pete Maravich was one of my favorite. Oh, Pistol nice. Pete. And like, because I saw flows, I was a great passer and I could put the ball where people were going to be instead of where they were. Mm. And yet I stopped playing basketball in seventh grade when everyone started to grow Mm. and I didn't. Right. And so, but like from basketball to girls who would look at me as like the cute little kid uh-huh. where my boy, my, my guy friends are like getting armpit hair and like growing seven <laughs> inches. I'm like, what the hell? And i um, and so then I'm looked over as being like, well, he's not the mate. He's, he's the friend. Mm. Um, and, and people, adults seeing me who I'm thinking of myself as I have the, I have more intelligence mm. than a lot of the adults that are surrounding me Mm -hmm. at at like 13 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And yet um, they're treating me like a child and because of how I looked, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Put me behind a wall, change my voice and let me talk to them. They would think I'm an adult. Right. But, and because of that, all of these factors, I had to, in order to become this person, I had to believe anything was possible. Mm. I I wouldn't allow myself to take on the limitations that other people seem to assume about me. So I know that for me, it started from almost like a a ego self-protection mechanism of I have to believe everything's possible. Otherwise I'm going to take on the belief that nothing's possible. And I refuse to let people do that. So I had like this chip on my shoulder. I would say that that started it for me. It's transitioned into a much healthier dynamic, but that's where it started for me. Got it. Got it. And how do we awaken that more like on a collective level? Well, let's I mean, take that's a away big question, the, but if we take out the part of me that felt inadequate, mm-hmm. right? What what I can say and saying it in a way that maybe is a little bit more um, helpful or like positive. I don't like positive negative, but you know what I mean. Is I wanted more for myself mm. than what other people saw for me, mm. mm-hmm. and if collectively we could say even as I'm saying this, I don't know that this is the answer because there's a part of me that's like, we have to be in gratitude for what we have. Mm -hmm. I think it's a a big part, part, but I also feel like we have to collectively say what everyone is saying is our future or is our possibilities. We have to collectively believe and desire something more than that. We can't actually exist and create from the space of limitation that most people are seeing this through. Right. We get to say, oh, no, no, I'm not going to accept that. <laughs> right. There's more available here. Yeah. And choose, choose, choose to create, um, to, to create from possibility, you know, And yeah, it's interesting when I feel into that, just like on a collective level, that, that shift inside of humanity, you know, um, of going, being like, okay, regardless of, or because whatever's being stimulated by what's happening, um, to look at that from the creator seat from through the lens of possibility and to give our energy and efforts towards, you know, whatever the chaos has stimulated in us, you know, in terms of what we want to create, um, and, and be able to respond rather than react. I, I I agree with that. And I think that we are, I, I believe that's, a big part of the reason why I coming full circle to how vulnerably I share and just like how much I bring of myself to everyone is I feel as if one of the natural tendencies is to see someone like Michael Jordan mm-hmm. and go, 
I, I love how I just humbly compared myself to Michael Jordan somehow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, was, that was smooth, bro. That was smooth. Props, I, props. I, <laughs> I, I said, um, but you see someone like Michael Jordan and the there's this assumption of like, oh, like he, that's just who he is is like that's just who he like he was born to be michael jordan mm. and you see um you don't i mean with michael jordan if you go into his story you you hear about him being cut from the basketball team and different things granted he also grew like six inches that summer it's a part that people don't tell about the story right, but like, right. there is other aspects but um because i i may have gotten cut and uh, i didn't grow six inches that summer so <laughs> um but my point is like when people see what i'm doing in the world i don't want people to go he was just born to be that Right. He was just like, he was just naturally always that I share as openly as I do so that people can see I had to work my ass off mm. to be this person. Right. I had to work my ass off to be, to feel like I, I could open my heart. I had to literally learn how to feel my emotions on a very technical level through acting because I'd shut myself down. Mm. So much. I had to be in a 10 year relationship with a woman who consistently had such depth of patience to my process of slowly opening my heart. Um, I, like that process of becoming this person and this human who now does all these things that people see, I want people to understand what went into that because I think right. that when you see that you understand more of what's possible as opposed to just what most people will do when they see Tiger Woods. Um, I, I compare myself to black athletes. To black athletes. <laughs> yeah, I see a pattern here. <laughs> black legends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what you, but you see, um, Tiger Woods go out there, or Justin Bieber. Here's good. Let's go with like, <laughs> let's go with Justin Bieber. Um, it, with Justin Bieber, what people, yes, he was born with an incredible amount of talent and an affinity to music. And that dude was working on it and practicing since he was like three years old. Right. He was playing instruments. He was singing. He was, you, everyone says, most people have seen that YouTube video of him, like, like on the street playing and singing guitar at like when he was like 10 years old or whatever. Yeah. And, but how many of us, even now at 35, I wouldn't go and play my guitar and sing for change on the side of the road. Right. Now. It's like that courage to step into that and that practice to do it from such a young age is a huge part of why he is who he is now. And totally. people need to see that. Yeah. It's interesting to see how that quality of, uh, I'll just say devotion or, you know, healthy obsession arises you know, it can arise out of trauma. It often does. You know, it can be cultivated by kind of no exposure, conscious parenting, mentors. But I feel like everyone has that in them. Because I know for me, it, it's like it has awakened in me the devotion. Because to me, devotion is like a, there's discipline, commitment, and devotion. And the more commitment you have, the less you have to exercise discipline. But when you have devotion, devotion is like a, an unstoppable commitment. It's something that you're willing to die for. And I think that that to me, when I'm in devotion, then it becomes timeless, meaning it, my, there's not a fixation on how long it's going to take me to get to the goal or to win the game or to learn the skill. Uh, devotion to me is also transcendent of success and failure, meaning I may want to succeed. I may not want to fail, but with the quality of devotion, there's not as much attention on that. There's just total immersion in the obsession of whatever it is that's being done. And I'm, I'm just curious about how to consciously cultivate that or awaken that in someone and just reflecting on how has that been awoken in me and in you or other high performers that I know. Um, but I feel like that devotional quality is what opens us up also to the infinite and open us, opens us up beyond ourselves because it's like the self is willing to die in devotion. It's like a mom mm -hmm. who's devoted to her children. She could not, you know, she could lose all of her money and lose her house. And she may have a lot to figure out. She may be scared. She may be terrified. She may not know what to do, but there's something about, I will feed my children even if I have to die, 
I will take care of my children. Mm. That's the quality of devotion. And it's a, it's a transcendent quality that I think it has the capacity to take us beyond the self because the self is where, you know, Oh, it gets too uncomfortable or it gets too hard or it might, it's taking too long. So I, I just need to stop. So I'm, I'm just curious. What do you, what are your, do you, if you have any thoughts on that, how to awaken or cultivate that in a particular area of your, of your life? You know, I've been looking at that recently. Like, like I was telling you earlier, we we're talking about flow. I was like, Oh, I've had a devotion to the fundamental principles that has allowed me to be in flow consistently. So the result of that is me being able to be in flow, but the training I it's, I've been devoted. You could say I've had a healthy obsession to that. I've had a mm-hmm. kind of, you know, must, I, I don't know. And that's resulted in these things. Yeah. I think uh, there's a lot of factors that are going to go into that strength of devotion. I think one of them you, you hinted on and touched on is seeing results. Like, I think that's a big piece of it. I think that, um, it starts with faith. I had an Instagram post recently about faith mm-hmm. um, and and faith being belief in something you can't yet prove. Right. And um, I think that that aspect of, of it is huge. And I truly believe that that faith will, with no results at all, will probably run out for people. It doesn't yeah. have to be huge, right. but just like little moments where you're like, oh, that's an example of, of what I believe and it reinforces it. So mm. I think there's a lot of little things that contribute to yeah. devotion in that way. But I think the well, probably the biggest one is um, people get to find that thing that's bigger than them. Right. Cause that's like, the thing that you're willing to die for and, and die in a, a practical human sense means just be uncomfortable, be deeply uncomfortable. It's like the uncomfortability itself is not the stopping point. It's like, I'm going in that direction. Like I'm devoted to love. So in my relationship, yeah, it it doesn't matter how difficult it gets. I'm not negotiating whether or not I'm moving in the direction of of wherever love is trying to take us. Yeah. And I think that for people who don't have devotion to something, Mm -hmm. uh, you just, they need to find it. And, and And the way to do that is to explore self expression to me. Yeah. Like I, I feel like that, that part of you and by self-expression, I'm like, just explore the parts of you that feel called to this. And it might be travel. It might be learning to play the guitar. It might be starting to draw. It might be starting a, a new hobby, like crocheting. Like it mm. might be like when you start to just follow the, the aspects of yourself and that inner calling, it will lead you to the thing that feels bigger than you. Right. I yeah. feel like, I feel like they say success leaves clues. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like our soul leaves clues for us to lead us to our devotion because when we can live a life of devotion, that's what I've found is the thing that gets me through the most difficult times in my life. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So let me ask you this as we're going to, I know you got a call coming up here. Mm. Um, bringing this back to relationships. Do you think that it's healthy to have that level of devotion to your partner, your romantic partner? Yeah, I do. I think, I think it's, it's very, I think it's awesome. To put your partner as the thing that's bigger than you. Well, I put, I put love as the thing that's bigger than me, but I've, you know, love is inseparable from my definition of awesome relationship. And so it's, it's, you know what I mean? So it's like, love is, is the thing I'm my devotion, my unstoppable devotion is to love, which allows me then to be devoted to the love in our union. But you love everyone. Right. Like you have unconditional love for everyone, but I, but I'm, you wouldn't I'm die condi- for everyone. I'm conditional with my time, with my energy, with my focus. Right. So uh, is it only romantic love that has you be in, is it devotion to a romantic love? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. let's say you love, you deeply love a, a friend. Like you love that friend, but like in that moment, are you dying for, for your friend? Maybe there's some, 
Mm. But then there's others that you might not be, but in your relationship, sure, you're putting that person, you're devoted because you're, you said yourself, devotion is something that you would die for when you're devoted that, that strongly. Right. Well, I guess in the relationship, you know, because I'm in a divine union, union relationship as I've defined it, then I see no separation from being devoted to the relationship or being devoted to myself because our relationship is aligned in that way. So me being devoted to her and her soul and her soul's evolution, I don't see it as separate. From, it's not like there's hers and their mine. Uh, and so mm. that is something that I'm willing to be die for or be deeply uncomfortable for because it's, I don't see it as serving one of us because I guess because of the way it's designed, because of the way it's aligned. It's like, if it's serving her, it's serving me. If it's serving me, it's serving her. I've until it doesn't. And well, until, until it doesn't, if until, it doesn't. Oh, if it doesn't, if, if it, it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah. Right. Cause that's the, I mean, you know, my relationship with Azria for 10 years, uh -huh. like for us, it just got to a point where it wasn't that anymore. Right. But it was for a decade and then it suddenly shifted and it wasn't that anymore. And it's like, well, I, I guess, but if, if it, if there came a time and it wasn't that it's not that the devotion would change because I'm devoted to love and how I've defined love and relationship on a core level of loving her soul and whatever's most important for her, then and vice versa, then if it ever got to the point where it wasn't, it's not that the devotion would go away. I still would be in devotion to her soul in our relationship. Then it would just change forms. But the devotion to love and to her soul's evolution and whatever is feeding and, and most important to her, that wouldn't that that wouldn't change. That devotion doesn't change, even if the form changes. Because if you weren't feeling aligned with the relationship anymore, that it would be not highest for her soul for you to stay in it. Exactly. Because that would be, so then that would be selfish if I stayed in it, it wouldn't be love. And that would be going against my devotion. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Well, to full circle, wrap this up here, because <laughs> we could talk, we could talk forever, bro. Um, is to identify a soulmate, to identify a soulmate, there's a depth to the connection. Yeah. Feeling of goes, home. A feeling, feeling of familiarity. Right. Right. And so there's depth, there's familiarity, um, there's frequency, mm. meaning like the way in which there's something about how and the frequency which, which they exude and communicate just is intoxicating. Right. right? It like feels endlessly intoxicating. Like it feels like an infinite well. Yeah. You just want more of right. that frequency. And um, an aspect that we got to here is that it's also grounded in the reality of their humanness. Right. That's well. what makes it grounded. That's what makes it grounded. And that's what it, it like, well, that's what makes it where I can actually be a soulmate. Otherwise we're just, just souls. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's souls. not it's existing in another dimension. <laughs> we're in a different dimension of our souls. <laughs> but we want to live human, that in this dimension. For the human soulmate aspect, I need to see, be grounded into my, my love of this human and all their characteristic flaws and, and, and right. everything. And then finally, if we're talking romantic soulmates, there's a, physical connection that we both feel is important, which on my end, which we didn't, don't have time to get into. I refer to as the spark, mm. um, that defies logical understanding. There are people that are on, on the surface that are incredibly beautiful that you connect to and you're like, Ooh, I'm just, I'm just not, I would think on paper that I would be incredibly drawn to this person right. physically, but that spark isn't there. And then there's other people where you're like, they're not my type at all, but there's something that draws me physically yeah. to the person. You could talk about pheromones and different things, but like the spark of, of physical attraction that would lead to the romantic aspects. Totally. And I feel like that, that uh, endless conversation energy that I feel like that is inherent in the physical spark as well. In, ter in terms of the magnetism, fascination, even just in like communicating, I feel like that's a quality that's in the physical magnetic mm. attraction. It's like, it's like our bodies want to communicate in this. It, right. It's the phys it's like a physical expression of that, Got you it. know, it's, instead of like 
you know, we're mentally making love. Now we're physically making love within this infinite energy. You totally. Know? And which has its own deeply layered aspects to totally. it in terms of maintaining that sexual chemistry and polarity over time and just like so much, which we just don't have time to get into today. Oh, yeah, but yeah. I do think we've done a pretty good job of helping define what a soulmate, soulmate is. is. Yes, well done. Uh, well done. For, ta- an undertaking that was uh, uh, pretty... Uh, well done, if I say so myself. Well done, Oren Harris. Thank you. Thank you for the challenge. Yeah, yeah you really brought the, the questions like, hmm, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah, thanks for, for diving deep with me today and everyone listening to this. Um, uh, why don't you let people know where they can you know find more of, of your stuff, what you got going on? Yes. So I am, my website is orenharris.com, O-R-E-N-H-A-R-R-I-S.com. I'm at Oren Harris on Instagram. I post there daily and I'm also Oren Harris on Facebook. Those are the top three places to find me. There it is. And, uh, for all of you deep divers who've been in on this conversation, uh, please help spread this out. Help yes. spread this out. Make sure that that you send it to a friend, send it to your soulmate. And honestly, have discussions around this. More than anything, I would love, mm, yes. I love, love, love hearing that this led to, to powerful conversations. And um, if you share it on, on social media, share it with like your own thoughts around it. Tag me in it. Let me see what sorts of, of intellectual, emotional thoughts and processes come mm, from this conversation. Because yes. I know Oren, with, you tag Oren as well, because this is just such a, a great conversation to continue as we can as we collectively move into that space of even more possibility um, together and we just fall in love more deeply with all of our soulmates that are out there yes <laughs> uh, thank you thank you thank you everyone for for being a part of this uh, I want to remind you that always in always you are seen you are heard and you are loved I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day you